Well, good morning, everyone, and a happy new year to you, and a happy new year to you, Roy. To you also, Bill. And Roy, uh, we've started off the, the new year with a bit of a, uh, a flourish with Confederate Lady. She might be really out of the box. Yes, she's, um, she's a filly that uh, sort of caught the imagination uh, with her only two starts. She was a very impressive trial winner mm. uh, prior to her first start in a race. And uh, I think her, her run at Sandown made a lot of people sit back and say, oh, this could be the best one we've seen yeah. so far this season. And I think yesterday vindicated that. What I, what I like about this filly is she's not necessarily a thousand metre squib. That's correct. She yeah. gives me the impression she's going to be a lot happier at 1,200 metres and further. She sat back off the pace yesterday. She looked comfortable, but the impressive part, I think, when Gouch went up and joined the leader about the 200, bit outside the 200 metre mark, and he picked his whip up, and to see that length of the stride, mm. she's, a, she's a big filly, yes. and she's got a beautiful sweeping action, I think we're going to hear a lot more of her, and especially as the races get a bit further. Um, you know, there's been, we've been saying early right through our spring carnival, where are the good two-year-olds? And I think they're starting to emerge now, I think with the Bletchingly filling, the filly of Colin Hayes, one recently at Mooney Valley, I think she's an improver. TJ's uh, still gloating about uh, his two-year-olds mm. in Sydney. Obviously, Mercury's very good. But uh, this one's going to take a bit of toppling. I think there's a lot of improvement in her also. OK, well, let's have a look now as we see the performance by Confederate Lady. Around the turn, 400 metres out. Spring to on the inside, tackled by Shimasu. Confederate Lady pulls to the outside now, three wide, followed by Tranquil Cove. Joma Special back in behind them, followed by Lady Fair Moss. 2.20 out though. Shimasu just in front. The Gouch now pulls the whip on Confederate Lady. She picked up Shimasu in a stride, and brother, look at her go. Is she good? She's very, very good, Confederate Lady. She is a superstar in the making. Confederate Lady wins, pulling up by five. Second home was. Uh, Shimasu. Yeah, well, it started two to one on. It was money for jam, as it turned out. Shimasu at 16 to one and beam by Valentine at seven to one. Well, there's not a lot more we can say about that, except that punter started off well. Well, it uh, was well, something that uh, will come out of that. And if we just have a look now at the, uh, with the second race, uh, the time, now that's a two-year-old filly, mm. and she runs just on half a second faster than a pretty smart little horse that wins his second race, and he's a three-year-old colt. Okay, let's look at Imad Karras as the horse scoring and its favorite. Pull to the outside now, Lomon Bay. In behind them, Vatican City, Classic Sculptor. Well back as Copper Cabaret, Rackmoan as French Flair. And last is King's Answer. 2.50 out though, Ed Karras on the outside. Hit the lead quite comfortably now. Lomon Bay from well back is running home into second place in good time dancer boxing on from Alounda Sam, but it's all Ed Karras. Ed Karras bolting away, scores by two and a half. Good time dancer has just held on for second in front of Lomon Bay third. Vatican City. And the second favourite, successfully. Had Car six to four, one easily from Good Time Dancer and Loman Bay. Now, Roy, as you said, it's won very easily, but uh, the time was 0.4 of a second slower than the filly in the first. Yes, uh, this is what uh, you know. I was relating to mm. now that that fellow's a pretty experienced little horse, although he's only had the four runs. He he's uh, had a few problems, and he has been round for a while. And he's a typical little speed horse. Not much of him is by the great Sir Dapper, and he's only a little pony, but he's a runner. And for the Confederate Lady to go 0.4 of a second faster than that, I think, speaks volumes for it as a two-year-old. But uh, not getting away from Ed Karras, Ed Karras will go on and win better races because he looks a genuine little horse. Sure does. In the third race in the program, the Freeman Stable going for three out of three, saddled up the favourite, Brisk. Quickly got to Brisk. It looks to be doing the better. Grey Liberty, 300 out on the turn. It'll straighten up a length and a half in front. Grey Liberty, it's full of running now. Three lengths away, Silent Show, followed by Strike the Gong, then French Venom. 2.50 out, though. Grey Liberty found two and a half to Brisk, and behind them, Silent Show. Then Strike the Gong, who's boxing on, but it's all Grey Liberty. He'll win comfortably from Brisk, and Silent Show getting into third placing, but Grey Liberty wins it by three. Brisk second, a length and three quarters away, third Silent Show. Grey Liberty. 2 to 1, racing consistently, Brisk the 6 to 4 favourite and Silent Show 3rd at 12 to 1. Well the public loves a grey Roy and, and this one could be uh, a horse that they're going to cotton on to and, and they're going to get some good collects from. Until I think the uh, you know the stronger horses mm. come on the scene. He's a very consistent horse, he's an honest race horse, genuine, you know every time he's going to go out that he's going to perform for you and whilst these uh, distance races are reasonably weak around this time of the year he could easily string a couple more together before the weights catch him. Oh, there was a pretty intelligent ride there by Rodney Dawkins yes, with, a, with a query on 
brisk at the 2,400 yes. metres. Yeah. Dork sat off him, and at about the 6, 700, he, uh, when Brisk started to move towards the lead, Dork said, OK, here's my chance to see how strong you really are. And that took the sting out of, out of Brisk, and it, it let the grey horse win a lot easier. Yeah, he's a, he's a Good smart ride, rider, rider. Um, yeah. sometimes an underrated rider. He's dead dog. right there. Let's have a look at the first leg of the quaddy. Ideal Manners back in behind them, followed by Champagne Diamond, a length away Cresc and pulls to the outside. Well back on the race, Champagne Pearl, followed by Somber Lass, Arctic Crown. Nam Nam Pros is back in behind them, 2.50 out. Shalado Lady in front. Categora's now getting out, making ground and wider out now. Here is Cresken. Cresken raced up on the outside to tackle Categor. Categor reached the lead, 100 out, it kicked from Cresken. Now under pressure from Ideal Manners and Categor gets there. Categor by nearly two. Cresken says... She well, Category 6 to 1 beat Creskin 4 to 1 favourite, and Ideal Manners at 7 to 1. It was a pretty wide open race, that one, uh, boy. It, it was a pretty open field mm. uh, prior to the race, Bill, and uh, it was good to see Normie Weymouth back. That's uh, the second yeah. of the rancher stock that, that, that won yesterday. And Charlie Weymouth, his father who trains horse, uh, he's one of the characters of racing Charlie because of uh, rancher fame. And uh, I had to laugh yesterday, he hadn't had a winner for a while and things hadn't been going too good. He said, I even had to sell the budgie last week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's good to see him back. The favourite, Keskin, looked like uh, it was going to win about 200 mm. out, but it's run ended. Let's Couldn't have a look on. now at Ranchita starting favourite in the next. Ranchita a length and a half away, third now pulls to the outside from Silver Scout. Wolven and Diamonds under the whip, not going all that well, followed by Tim's Gambler, 250 out though. Prismatic Star a length and a half in front of Bo Courier under the whip with Ranchita, followed by Silver Scout down the outside. It's Prismatic Star pulling out plenty at the 150, a length and a half in front. From the tail now, flashing home as Sacristy on the outside. It is flying Prismatic Star just in front, Laconian flashing home. Oh, Prismatic Star and Laconian out wide. And Laconian put most of us out of the quadrilla. 40 to 1. Prismatic Star 7 to 2. Very disappointing. Ranchita and Wolverton Diamond also. Wolverton Diamond put in a shock. I think something must have went amiss there because she's a good race filly yeah. or race mare. Ranchita, I thought, disappointing. Uh, had a chance. There have been excuses made, and probably rightfully so. Her last start when she finished fourth, she had no luck at all. But uh, yesterday, perfectly ridden, uh, had a chance, and I thought very disappointing. Okay, let's go to the next race in the program. And uh, this, of course, uh, is the event in uh, which we saw Gay Perdita just too good for them. Sylvan Star, Spider Rose, Lady Shibboleth, Inquisitive and Gil Goods Bell. Gay Padita, 300 out though, got that run, broke away two in front. World News under the whip is now coming out after Gay Padita, followed by Cathcart Lass and Lucky Lotto down the outside. Inside the 200, Gay Padita over two in front of Cathcart Lass. World News can't go on from Lucky Lotto. Gay Padita in front though, Cathcart Lass is trying hard and Gay Padita gets there. Gay Padita wins by a length and a half to Cathcart Lass. Two away third tight lady shibboleth maybe a nose to like and gay padita 11 to 2 battled on well from cathcart lass and lady shibboleth and world news the disappointing favorite at six to four yes one of the colin hayes stock uh, we haven't seen a lot of world news here mm. but uh, i think it's a pretty ordinary little cutty it's uh, it's run a lot of placings it's only i think had about two or three wins mm. for about 25 starts but it looks a one pace which is seems yeah. to battle on the one pace uh, once again, horses up near the lead had the advantage at Caulfield yesterday, and it certainly helped uh, Gay Padita to win. Got a break on it. Yeah. Them. And away they went. Yeah, that worries me a little bit, that horse is up near the lead, because <laughs> I, I see that the way races are running, the speed they're run at today, Roy, I think that's got a lot to do with it, really, because, you know, horses coming from 8th to 9th in a field coming to the home turn, they've got to run the last two in about yeah. 21, haven't they? Our uh, racing's changing it uh, changes uh, in style. the last 10 or 12 yeah. years here in Australia. Yes. We are becoming very Americanised. A lot of the trainers, I've noticed a big change in, in the great bat. Right up, buddy, methods. we better get on to the next okay. race in the cart. Here's the last leg of the quad. Around the turn, 350 metres out. Imperial Arch had got to the lead of Proud Swiray. Marabou's Phantom now tackling it, followed by Sir Terence. Edward Mack now pulls to the outside as Marabou's Phantom, 250 out, got away. It's full of running Marabou's Phantom. Then Trendy Bay, outgun not in the race. Imposing Bloom is making ground down the outside, but it's all Marabou's Phantom. It'll win at about five and a half lengths from Edward Mack. Imposing Bloom is flying on the outside with Trendy Bay, but Marabou's Phantom wins at nearly five, two. Edward Mack, third maybe. It found a bit of speed uh, yesterday. Marabou's Phantom, 12 to 1. It's cantered in from Edward Mack, an imposing bloom. Kremlin easy in the betting, and the suggestion is it might be principally a wet track at this stage. Yeah, it's got a long way back in the race and uh, never appeared to be travelling well at any stage. No excuses, really. The best horse won on the day there easily. Let's have a look at the last on the program at Caulfield.
Turner back in behind them from King's Talk, Primazan and Tilbury Temptation. On the turn, 300 out, ultravite tackle by Starbazoo. And Dowie wider out, followed by Amboise, who's making ground 250 out, though. He's starting to knuckle down Amboise. He got the Starbazoo and Dowie the outside. At the 180, Amboise now reached the lead from Starbazoo, boxing on Dowie the outside. Amboise slowly but surely getting the upper hand near the line. And Amboise has got there. Amboise by a half length to Starbazoo. Amboise, two in a row at 9 to 2. Starbazoo heavily backed and erratic in the straight 5 to 2. And Dowie, the 9 to 4 favourite, third. Now, the extra double for yesterday's meeting uh, out at Caulfield. 1 and 2, 835. The daily double, 11 and 7, $781. Big one there. The quadrilla, 12,146.30 for 2, 8, 4, and 7. And the quad extra for $52,699. The numbers you wanted, 11, 4, 7, and 2. Now, they've got a very big program, Roy, at uh, Flemington on Tuesday. I think they've got nine races there. Yes, big program um, with Cranbourne taking over the Wednesday time slot, uh, Flemington to race Tuesday. Yes. Big meeting at Cranbourne on Wednesday and uh, Mooney Valley and on Saturday. Mooney Valley race on Saturday. Uh, we've had a, a glut of race meetings over the uh, holiday and festive season. and. By the look of the calendar, I was only going through it on Friday, and there's a lot more coming up. So oh, yes. If you've got any money left, there's still plenty of meetings to bet at. There is. Been a big week or two for Hyperion, too. They've won yes, lots we've, of races. We've had a, a great run of success recently, and it's great for our owners, and we're very happy. Okay, so don't forget to keep that in mind, will you? Flemington, very big meeting on Tuesday, Cranbourne Race Wednesday, and Mooney Valley on Saturday. We hope to see you somewhere in a race course soon.